What is going on everybody and welcome back to a very special series called the Power Saver and Performance Guide and this is my tailored guide for the Steam Deck OLED. Now if you haven't seen any of my Power Saver and Performance Guides I will provide them at the end of this video but basically these guides are made to give you what the title says and that is the best possible performance to battery saving ratio on your handheld PCs like Steam Deck, Steam Deck OLED, ROG Ally, Legion Go or whatever comes out next. But this is a guide specifically focused on Steam Deck OLED. And in my experience, the Steam Deck OLED is one of the most well-optimized handhelds I've ever used in my entire life. This thing can put out Switch-like battery life and then some. And I can't wait till Valve releases the Steam Deck 2 with a larger battery and increased resolution display, whenever that may be. But I am very excited to get started on this guide. Now, of course, if you do wanna save an extra 20 to 30 minutes of battery life, disabling Wi-Fi and Bluetooth will help. But for the majority of these tests and settings, I did have Wi-Fi turned on because some games require an internet connection on first startup, so you might not have a choice. But the first game I tested is DMC Devil May Cry. I managed to get six hours and five minutes with this game and the resolution was set to 928 by 580p with all of the graphics settings set to default. I also used the default Proton and with the Steam Deck settings I set the display to 60 FPS and the TDP to 7 watts. The scaling filter because the resolution was set to 580p was set to sharp but DMC Devil May Cry is one of my favorite titles because of its aesthetic and combat and I think that six hours is more than enough to actually beat this game in one sitting with one charge if you're good enough and the next game I tested was the Elder Scrolls Skyrim Special Edition I used the default proton for this game as well and I managed to get four hours out of this title and for some reason there was no graphic settings available I think this is a specific optimization for the Steam Deck but similar to Atomic Heart the graphic settings were just completely removed. And I think it's because there are certain settings that don't sit right with the Steam Deck, but this game runs at an optimal 45 FPS by setting your Steam Deck to 45 Hertz and the allow tearing option was enabled and the TDP was set to nine Watts. Now that was the lowest TDP that I can get in order to get this game to run at 45 FPS. Unfortunately, I couldn't hit 60 with this, but I think four hours with Skyrim Special Edition at 800p is very impressive. And the next game I tested was Left 4 Dead 2, and I tested this in split screen. So I was playing this game co-op with the default Proton, and I was playing this game in co-op for 6 hours at 800p. With default graphic settings, and the Steam Deck settings were set to 45 hertz, with the TDP limit at 6 watts. And in my opinion, Left 4 Dead 2 is the best co-op game on the Steam Deck, especially the Steam Deck OLED. This game looks fantastic. You get around six hours with it. And honestly, Left 4 Dead is the best co-op game I've ever played in my life, right next to Halo and a few Mario titles. But Steam's version of Left 4 Dead 2 adds the split screen feature, which basically launches the game twice. So if you're trying to record like I did, it'll record two separate screens for some reason. So running this game twice can get you six hours. Now that's impressive. And the next game I tested was Marvel Spider man 1 with the default proton and I managed to get 5 hours and 10 minutes. I set the resolution to 800 by 600 P. V-Sync was turned off, frame generation enabled. The upscale method is FSR 3 set to dynamic. The upscale sharpness was set to 7. Dynamic resolution scaling was set to 30 FPS. Graphics preset was set to medium and the Steam Deck settings was at 40 FPS. Allow tearing was enabled and the TDP limit set to 7 watts and the scaling filter set to sharp and Marvel Spider-Man 1 is a game that I played for countless hours on the Steam Deck. I think this is one of the better performing games on the system. Not so much when it first released on Steam but it has gotten progressively better over the years and I think that it is at the best state it's ever been especially since you can get five hours with it. The next game I tested was Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1. I used the default Proton I managed to get six hours and 10 minutes with this title. The display mode was set to full screen, resolution set to auto, and I believe that is dynamic resolution. 
but you can barely tell. V-Sync was set to off, triple buffering on, anti-alias off, depth of field on, display shadows on, and the Steam Deck settings was set to 60 FPS, the allow tearing option was enabled, and the TDP limit was set to 5 watts. And Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1 is one of my go-to games if I want to feel the nostalgia of playing the original Xbox or PlayStation 3 version. I have tried to mod the game in order to get Ninja Gaiden Sigma Black, but modding is still an issue on the Steam Deck because it requires so many steps. You just go down this insanely convoluted rabbit hole every time you try to mod a game on the Steam Deck, and I haven't had luck with Ninja Gaiden Sigma 1 or 2. But Sigma 1 still plays exceptional, and I still love Sigma 1, even though it has its downsides compared to the original Black. The next game I tested was Proteus. I used the default Proton as well, and I managed to get five hours with this game. V-Sync was set to off, screen resolution was set at 800 by 500 p 90 hertz and all of the other graphic settings were set to default the steam deck settings were set to 60 fps the allow tearing option was enabled the tdp limit was set to 7 watts and the scaling filter was set to sharp and Proteus is one of those games that was inspired by doom 2016 but it has a feel of doom 2016 but the aesthetic of the original doom games but sometimes even better i think setting the resolution lower somehow helps the aesthetic of the game and makes it feel a little more retro. So even if you're playing it at 500p, you'll barely tell the difference. And the next title I tested was The Last of Us Part 1. I used the default Proton for this game, and I managed to get 3 hours and 30 minutes with it. The graphics preset was set to low, V-Sync turned off, frame rate cap was set to 30, frame generation was turned on, with scaling mode set to FSR 3.1, the quality was at performance, and the sharpening at 40. Everything else was default. The Steam Deck settings was set to 45 fps as usual allow tearing was enabled tdp limit was set to 12 watts and the scaling filter set to sharp now the last of us part one is a very demanding game on the steam deck but i think they managed to optimize it so well for the system considering what kind of hardware you have in the steam deck and the steam deck oled but for some reason on the steam deck oled this game is surprisingly smooth and i managed to get almost four hours with it now i did not expect that i thought i was going to get maximum two hours and 30 minutes but the last of this part one is very well optimized for the Steam Deck OLED, and this handheld just keeps surprising me. It plays more consistently well on the Steam Deck OLED than my other handheld PCs. And alternatively, to get the most out of the battery and performance with The Last of Us Part 1, you can actually get 4 hours with this game if you set the Steam Deck's frame limit to 40 FPS, the TDP limit to 9 watts, but the display settings and frame rate cap needs to be set to 40. And lastly, you could turn off Wi-Fi and everything else in the Steam Deck settings, graphics, and display settings are the same as before. This will give you an extra 30 minutes of battery life and you'll manage to reach four hours with The Last of Us Part 1. So far out of any handheld I've tested, this has been the most impressive balance of performance and optimization. The Steam Deck OLED just continues to surprise me and I think this is actually the best handheld that I've ever used. Sure, you can play The Last of Us Part 1 on a Windows handheld. It'll probably give you better performance, but I've played it on Windows handhelds and it has crashed multiple times. The Last of Us Part 1 is not stable on Windows, but on Linux or Steam Deck OLED, this game has never crashed on me once, and I managed to get a full four-hour session with it. So if you're still having some doubts about the Steam Deck OLED, just look at all of these stats. This is the most impressive handheld to ever be manufactured, and there's no exaggeration in that. I never thought I would see these kind of numbers with any handheld in my life. If The Last of Us Part 1 could reach 45 FPS, I would at least think it will only last two hours, but it managed to go three hours to even four if you knock the FPS down to 40. But yeah, guys, which games do you want to see me test next? And if you have any questions about my settings, let me know in the comments below. And thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a good one. Later.